Miss Prudence Featherington, Miss Philippa Featherington, and Miss Penelope Featherington, all presented by their mother, the Right Honourable Lady Featherington. Three misses foisted upon the marriage market like sorrowful sours by their tasteless, Tighter. tactless mama. Tighter! Is she to breathe, mama? I was able to squeeze my waist into the size of an orange and a half when I was Prudence's age. Your sister shall do the same. <gasps> It is only the Queen's eye that matters today. I should not be surprised if this whistledown is revealed to be Violet Bridgerton herself. These pages certainly report on the Viscountess's family with much indulgence indeed. Madam? Yes? Violet. Ladies, hurry with your miniatures before our guest arrives. And Penelope, put down that book at once. You shall confuse your thoughts. It's lucky her gentleman agreed to a hasty marriage after she went and ruined herself. Light skirts. <laughs> but how much competition can this cousin provoke? She came of age on a farm. She has a mere four-figure dowry. And as for her appearance, well, let us hope Miss Thompson is more presentable than the legions of unkempt animals she has spent her entire life tending to back home with. <gasps> Marina Thompson, a distant cousin of my husband's. She's rather dowdy, is she not? The Duke. I would recognize him anywhere. No, where are you taking us? To meet the Duke. That man's not an Aunt Minutes. Make haste before he should see Miss Thompson. <laughs> Let me introduce my daughters, Miss Prudence Featherington, Miss Philippa Featherington. The Earl of Stafford and the Marquis of Finley. You would. Well, you should have my colourful fashions to thank. <clears throat> For a Miss Marina Thompson? Should you not be out on your daily walk about the square, dear? It appears as though it may rain. Wonderful, wonderful gentlemen. Thank you for your calls. Do not forget to bid Prudence, Philippa, or even Penelope farewell as you go. She must be overjoyed. Miss Thompson's so high in her instep that she's unable to don her own slippers. I should think not. You can always send the willow back to a farm, madam. As if Lord Featherington would ever allow that. Mama, might I go play with Eloise? Maybe does not play, Penelope. Give me, Mama. And might I go promenade for suitors with Eloise? Very well, then. Penelope has inquiries. If you do not call silence about Miss Thompson's condition. I beg your pardon. I know, Ma. Why is Miss Thompson to be kept away? Because her condition is catching. Penelope Featherington, what did I tell you about cavorting with the expectant? Perhaps I took your measurements wrong. Miss Thompson has a fondness for cake. A reducing diet will work wonders for her, I'm sure. Lord Middlethorpe, you simply must meet Miss Marina Thompson. Penelope, allow us to view some of the paintings over here. Oh, I just had a brief question to ask Marina. No, now is not the time, Penelope. You are a meddlesome little wench, and you clearly do not understand the gravity of your situation. That will need to change. Her needlework is divine. And of course she sings and plays the pianoforte very prettily. Show me a smile, girl. I beg your pardon. Y your teeth. I want to see them. Is she simple-minded? Goodness, no. Oh, you are droll. Miss Thompson, um, show Lord Rutledge your lovely smile. You cannot be serious. How oh, dare you conduct yourself in such a brazen manner. Do you see now what I must endure daily, my lord? Mm. Lord Rutledge. Miss Thompson has spent all afternoon telling us how eager she is to converse with oh, I don't need a conversation. Miss Thompson, you'll be delighted to know that Lord Rutledge is no longer available. He is engaged as of this morning. That is... how terrible. I have asked Miss Marina Thompson 
to be my wife, and she has accepted. Turn, please. Profile. Swish. Swish. Good. Please, you must call me Violet now, remember? Miss Thompson is such a proper young lady. I'm sensing a honeymoon in foreign parts. Yes, indeed, I believe a honeymoon in foreign parts would be just the thing. Mr. Bridgerton, you might even make the most of this fine weather that we've been having if you choose to marry sooner rather than later. In all honesty, it is like a battlefield. <laughs> well, in all honesty, I ought to make you come along to cough and splutter all evening. It would serve Lady Gartside right. She has been withholding a dinner invitation from me, and now look, not a day after Miss Thompson's announcement, and they all come crawling. Dear Lady Bridgerton, is this not a dreadful circumstance for us both to have been so duped by that scheming hussy? To think that Miss Thompson would take advantage of my kindness after I opened my home to her. You must believe. I had no idea of... I'm so glad you thought to visit us, Your Grace. I fear your mother was rather heated at luncheon. But of course, if you've come to offer an explanation... Of course, my young ladies will have to hear about the wondrous festivities the next day, seeing how they did not receive an invitation. Prudence, in particular, is in tears about it. Is she not, Mrs. Varley? Oh, absolute watering pot, that one. Respectful marriage. Miss Thompson, what a fine thing. Sir Philip inherited the crane title. He has a perfectly adequate estate to support you and... Perhaps your distant cousins. Everything works out in the end. Oh, and Philippa, perhaps Mr. Finch might even reconsider his proposal now that um, you have your dowry again. Oh, who's here? You must heed most. One can never know the truth of a marriage hiding behind closed doors.